from linear economy to circular economy. There is a big change here and that requires a larger cooperation globally. We have to rationally cooperate and act together rather than thinking individually how we can win the race. Hi there. Welcome to the Circum Center, a series of stimulating dialogues on the circular economy. Today's topic is the brewing and beverage industry. Beer is the fifth most consumed beverage after tea, carbonated drinks, milk and coffee. As a result, the food and beverage industry is responsible for more than 17 billion tons of carbon dioxide, about one third of total global emissions. This number is almost 19 times bigger than what the aviation industry causes. So maybe we should also consider what we eat and drink daily besides occasionally cutting down air travel. What can a brewing company do to transform into a circular economy? Meet John Chaka. John is the CEO and president of Anadolu FS Beer Group, with operations in six countries and 27 facilities. Anadolu FS is committed to achieving net zero emissions across all its operations by 2030. In addition, they collaborate with startups and have a larger goal to enable circularity within the company. Let's hear from John about the role of the brewing and beverage industry in enabling a circular economy. Hi, John. Welcome to the Circum Center. Thank you. Thank you, Sardash. Thank you for the introduction. We're first going to start with your personal circle. And my first question will be, when you think about your past, what was the most important event in your life that made you who you are today? Well, um, obviously it is very, very difficult to pinpoint just one uh, event. I mean, it's, it's not just one event, one decision. It's uh, the consistency of the decisions that you take that makes you uh, what you are. But one important decision in my life was uh, I have a background on, on engineering, electric and electronics engineering. And I started my career as a software developer, then turned into a, a system analyst. And I was kind of a, back then, uh, one of the um, you know, pioneers in that arena in Turkey when the, the whole systems uh, development, ERP developments were about to merge in Turkey. At that time, I was also having my graduate st study at uh, Middle East Technical University at uh, MBA class. And somehow my way coincided with Anadolu FS. And Anadolu FS was at that time was thinking, contemplating about setting up its uh, very first investments outside of its the, um, Turkey, outside of our um, home country. And when I met with the team that was recently set up, the, I was highly motivated, impressed with the vision of a Turkish beverage company to have, and let's say, a vision, aspiration to go beyond the borders, to grow outside of Turkey and uh, become if not global, at least a regional. So that vision really motivated me. And, you know, when I went back home, slept over the night, the next day I said, I want to be a part of that vision. And I, since then, I'm very highly motivated with that vision. Basically, that was the decision to totally convert my career into the career that brought me today to this role. And uh, basically still with the idea of a kind of developing a Turkish enterprise as a global company within the beverage sector, which is which is also a very competitive one. Now we're moving into the second circle of our conversation, which is going to focus on your industry and your business. How does the Turkey Circular Economy Platform provide value in your transformation efforts around the circular economy? Thank you. Perfect question. Uh, obviously, let's start with the Business Association for Sustainable Development Turkey. That association has been established back in 2016 and Andula FS was one of the very first partners within this association. So since then, we are actively having roles in the development. And I'm also taking, a, let's say, lead role in, in the board of the association and also being a part of the working group for the development of the circular economy platform. First of all, I mean, we need to replace this linear approach into a circular economy perspective first, and that requires a mind shift change and that requires first um, the let's say participants awareness is very important and circular economic platform first of all at, at first creates this awareness and secondly obviously when the cre awareness is created 
that also creates a let's say platform for different partners to consider what are the you know raw material remains or uh, byproducts or waste that can be reutilized in different processes and the that brings different partners into the same platform thinking about what else can be done and also creating transactions and when we look at from the establishment actually we are uh, seeing back in 2021 we have reached a significant level of uh, transactions there has been um, transactions that covers around 13 tons of materials to change between uh, different partners of the platform and that created a value of around 1.8 billion euros and that's a significant amount and more than the amount more than the amount of the transaction as, uh, themselves the importance is the utilization of the materials that would or byproducts that would be disposed if we didn't have this platform so that is very important in that perspective creating awareness having more partners in having more transaction but uh, more importantly having more and more remaining raw materials byproducts to be reutilized different parts of the economy that would reduce the virgin resource usage and that would help uh, for, for the sustainable development for that would help us um, in, in that perspective to be able to leave a livelihood for the next generations on, on the globe. Can you tell us about the circular economy product Anadolu has developed with the Turkey circular economy platform? Thank you. Thank you again. A very good example. We are very proud with what we are doing around Malta. It's a long story covers exactly what, what what you said first the entrepreneurship within the corporate itself and secondly the the circular economy using a byproduct um, as uh, most people would know actually beer is uh, is uh, made of uh, four natural ingredients our beer it's barley malted barley water hops and yeast uh, one of the most in, the largest uh, byproduct within our process actually is the brewer's spent grain and brewer's spent grain is actually very rich in terms of fiber very rich in terms of protein so in that perspective for long years actually brewer's spent grain is used for as an animal feed and still we are supplying farmers as a, a animal feed but within the corporate entrepreneurship program two of our engineers food engineers came up with the idea of upcycling the brewer's spent grain and having as a component for food. And that started ignited within the organization. So that's how Malta came into picture for the last two and a half years, the teams worked around that. And now they, the, the business already spinned off. And also it's, it's a very important uh, example for our organization. Different ideas can pop up and turn into uh, real business propositions. What is the core reason for these collaborations? Can you give us some examples about those partnerships? First of all, as I try to explain our founding principle in terms of creating a social impact. So in that perspective, we want to create the social impact and extend our social that impact with our partners. And that has been always the case. So the second perspective is to partner with young generations. So we would like to also support the uh, new generations, young talents in their endeavor to change the world, to make the world in a better place. That's the second part. And third, actually, Anadolu FS is also kind of 50 years ago started with the vision of our two founders as an entrepreneurship um, story itself. So we always try to keep that motivation, entrepreneurship spirit and uh, motivation within the organization. That's why for long we are trying to cooperate with startups, with young talent where, and trying to realize uh, their uh, dreams on one hand. Together with this partnership also we are trying to find different solutions to the problems that we are seeing as a part of our endeavors in terms of trying to reduce our footprint in every area. For example, we are cooperating with BioLeave, which is trying to use, instead of plastic, environmental friendly ingredients that would have no, let's say, impact on the environment when it's disposed. We have created a lot of uh, 
materials for our usage. So we are reducing our plastic usage. We are helping them to realize their vision and we are creating a, an ecosystem here together with them. Another good example also is eCordy. I mean, they had this fantastic idea to increase the forestation with distributing plant seeds while drones. The last couple of years we've been uh, seeding uh, different parts of Tur Turkey. Together with eCording we have distributed around 5 million uh, seeds. That is making us very happy and that is why we are fully motivated and fully committed with respect to this um, entrepreneurship startup developments especially uh, with social impact especially with young people so that there we have a couple of partnerships uh, we continue and will continue obviously turkey is focused but extending again like we did our business extending beyond the boundaries in our region hopefully in the future globally and this concludes our second circle. Now we're moving into the third circle, where we're going to talk about the future. Anadolu Efes announced its 2030 goals almost a year ago. What was the driving force behind this effort? During the pandemic period, actually, we have seen how fragile is the economies, how fragile within the global perspective, how we are linked to each other, Let's say when it first started globally, when we first hear about it, we started to think about how it would impact our, let's say, business. But we thought beyond that and we said, OK, that would have uh, enormous impacts on the social life, on the societies that we are living in. We have created, we have come up with fantastic projects. We have come up with fantastic action plans. And almost in every country we are operating, we were the very first company who in announced the, let's say, social responsibility projects uh, during the pandemic period. So that's why I'm very proud of what we have done. And that's a good example of how the organizations can help the societies and can create this cooperative and collaborative uh, model in that perspective. What is your plan for the immediate future to reach these goals? Certainly, when you set goals, uh, you have to set the action plans and the road how you can achieve to these goals. We are uh, together with the support and supervision of our board of directors. We set up different, uh, let's say, committees and organizational roles. And uh, we have uh, divided, let's say, all these roadmap into different action plans. We have set up uh, in order to ensure the progress in many areas. We have uh, gathered all the efforts in uh, three uh, major headings. One is obviously zero for environment, and that is one of the most important areas. So now we are t we have teams in every country working around how we can reduce, let's say, first our usage, how we can reduce um, the, the resource usage, how we can convert into the green energy in the various projects have been set and those are planned for the next 10 years. Second area is uh, the social impact that we are uh, emphasizing in that manner very strongly. So again, uh, all those efforts that has been continued within Anadolu FS for the last uh, 50 years will continue. We have divided uh, into a few uh, areas uh, where we believe our social impact can be accelerated. And the third area is, is about gender equality. Again, we are trying to empower women in every other uh, society we are in and helping them in many aspects. But within the organization also, we are trying to ensure that we have equal opportunities for everyone, equal pay, equal approach, and equal promotion um, opportunities. So creating that. Again, we are looking into different metrics here and we are very happy, especially when we look at uh, our uh, next generations be below 30 years of age. Uh, our women participation is even higher than men participation. So that is a very strong uh, start, let's say, and that is really promising for, for future. So those are the areas that we have identified. So there are lots of energy, lots of ideas brewing around uh, those let's say, uh, goals, and we are going to implement those within the next 10 years. It was amazing to talk with you, John. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving the opportunity for us to be able to explain 
in that manner. Thank you for watching. We hope this conversation inspired you to start your circularity journey today. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell button not to miss the future dialogues with passionate leaders in the circular economy. If you enjoyed this conversation, you could listen to the whole interview on Spotify or Apple Podcasts from the link below. See you at the next Circumcenter episode, discovering the center of your decisions.